Hey guys, grab those air guitars and some weed because we're going to get high and do a movie review on Bill and Ted Face the Music. It will be most triumphant. Alright kids, this is a spoiler alert, so if you don't want me to ruin this film for you, shut this shit down now. I don't know about you guys, but I'm the type of person that likes the dessert first, clearly. So we're going to start off with things that I like about the film, then we're going to talk about things that I'm not really a fan of, and then we're going to talk about things that I want to change, and then finally we're going to give a rating on this film. Let's start off with the story. It's been about 25 years since the last film and Bill and Ted have yet to make the song that unifies the world. The fabric of space-time and all of existence is on the line this time, and things don't look good. As we reunite with Bill and Ted, they're now losers, they're struggling with their music career, they don't have the best relationship with the princesses, but they have these two amazing daughters. They haven't found success, they're physically, mentally, and emotionally drained from the pressure of the last 25 years trying to come up with this amazing song. Because the song they're supposed to write hasn't been written yet, shit's all fucked up within the space-time future. Because of this, Rufus's daughter is sent to the past to bring Bill and Ted to the future. When Bill and Ted arrive in the future, they are greeted by a hologram version of Rufus, which is a great homage to George Carlin. It's so wonderful to see him in this film. The fact that they brought him back is fucking awesome. Our heroes then meet with the elders and they explain the severity of what's going on. The end of the world and all of existence is at stake now. So the guys have to go out, make the song and perform it by the end of the day. We're also introduced to Bill and Ted's daughters in this film. And it's no surprise that their daughters are the key to saving the world and all of existence. We know this because in the beginning of the movie, the girls are the ones who are telling the story. That's not something you do with an ancillary character. That's meant for someone that has a very specific point in the film. This lets the audience know that the characters are there to do something very, very important. Anyways, the girls see their dads head off into the future, and they decide to help them out by going on their own journey. The girls go back in time to handpick musicians that they think will help their fathers create the song. At the same time, Bill and Ted travel to different times in the future in hopes of getting that song from the future versions of themselves. Blah, 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 shit happens. There's a killer robot sent to kill Bill and Ted. We're reunited with death and Kid Cudi comes along for the ride. The movie ends with everyone realizing that Bill and Ted's daughters are the key to the song. They're the ones that actually compose the song while Bill and Ted and the other musicians play it. The song gets played and reality as we know it's saved. Excellent! So that's the summary. Here's what I like. It was great to see Alex Winter and Keanu Reeves back as Bill and Ted. They were phenomenal, and their performance sparked serious nostalgia for this 90s kid. I loved everything about them. Their performance was absolutely phenomenal. They left me wanting more, and I, I just, I want more Bill and Ted in my life. Cameos from Ted's father, Missy, and Death were amazing. It really helped tie the story together after 25 years. Costuming, makeup, special effects, and sound, all phenomenal. I have no complaints regarding that. There was a surprise though. The breakout star of this film, Anthony Kerrigan's killer robot, Dennis Caleb McCoy. This dude was fucking amazing. I was cracking up the entire time he was on screen. He was funny, he was intimidating, he was silly. Everything about this character was just done right. They hit every nail on the head. The guy did a phenomenal job and it was an amazing performance. Here's the deal. The movie's really funny, it's family friendly, it's fun for everybody, and it's an excellent addition to the franchise. If you're a fan of Bill and Ted, just go see this movie. It's awesome, you're not gonna be disappointed. Here's what I didn't like about the film. Number one, the daughters. I thought these actresses were capable of so much more. When I found out that they went into the audition without seeing Bogus Journey or Excellent Adventure, it blew my fucking mind. How can you take on the responsibility of moving this franchise forward without knowing where these characters have been? These girls were essentially doing a shitty impersonation of Bill and Ted, and it just didn't work. And, you know, the girls could have kept the dialogue and the vernacular exactly the same. They could have used words like bogus, do, excellent. That was all fine. It's how they said those words that were the problem. It's literally like these girls went on YouTube and searched bad impressions of Keanu Reeves to study for this part. And I'm not trying to be a dick. I, I don't know what it is. It's just something about these characters and their performance. It doesn't seem genuine. Next is Kid Cudi. And I'm sorry, I love Kid Cudi. I'm a big Kid Cudi fan. But they just flung this dude in the movie and gave him some bullshit Doc Brown dialogue. This is another instance where someone's not used to the best of their abilities. We as fans deserve better and Carter deserves better. 
Dave Grohl has a fucking cameo in this movie, but he's got two lines. You have one of the greatest rock stars on earth and you give him two lines? What the fuck are you guys thinking? Again, here's a third instance of someone who's not used to the best of their abilities. Now you guys got me going. Here's the next thing that really pissed me off. Dude, you have an 80s based movie. There's no 80s montage. There's no awesome rock music. There's nothing. In Excellent Adventure, we had Play With Me by Extreme in the mall scene. In Bogus Journey, we had Battle Stations by Winger when Station's building the good robot Bill and Ted. In this movie, we've got jack shit. We've got nothing. We've got so many rock stars, so many musicians, and there isn't one song or one thing that I remember bobbing my head to this entire movie. The ball was dropped here in my opinion. This was an excellent chance for us to rock out with some awesome music, and we just didn't get it. Finally, the last thing I didn't like was the song that reunites the world and saves all of existence. It fucking sucked. This is something that can't and shouldn't be lackluster. At the end of Bogus Journey, we had God gave rock and roll to us. That fucking ended the movie on such a high note. This is something that should have been talked about non-stop. This was the, the great song that we've been waiting 25 years for and I can't even fucking remember it. And again, here's another instance where they dropped the ball. This scene should have been so fucking amazing and they didn't do it justice. In my opinion, this is how that final scene should have happened. As the daughters are composing the song and everyone's coming together, I would have had Dave Grohl on rhythm guitar rocking the fuck out. I would have had Kid Cudi humming and singing the hook and then boom, Cut to Bill and Ted checking Rufus's watch. The time to save the world is now. Bill turns to Ted. Are you ready, dude? Ted turns to Bill. Ready. We pan out. The guys step forward with their guitars. We get a nice wide shot. Bill grabs the mic. I am Bill S. Preston Esquire. And I'm Ted Theodore Logan. And together with the musicians behind us, we are Wild Stallions and the fucking place goes nuts and they perform the fuck out of that song. That's how you end the movie and you guys dropped the fucking ball. Now that being said, that's just how I wanted this movie to end. I've been a fan of this franchise for over 25 years, man. This is, this is all, like, I grew up on this shit. So to not see something like that done, it's a little bit of a letdown. Overall, I give Face the Music a solid six out of 10. This is a great movie for a new generation. If you've got kids, watch it with them. Show them uh, Excellent Adventure, Bogus Journey, and then Face the Music. Have fun as a family. Enjoy the shit out of this movie because it really is a good time. All right, guys, that's it for this episode. Do me a favor, smash that like button and subscribe to this channel for everything absurd reality. That's it for this transmission. We are out.